Welcome back to VFSN. I'm Chris DeMarco with Lefty McGovern and David Wang, and you're watching Match 2 of Week 2 of the VFDGL. Yeah, Chris, for your viewing pleasure today, we have the NJ Goldfinches against the Badlands Bandits. Both teams had a rough go of it in Week 1, only securing one point, but we're back at our home course, Greystone Woods, playing hole 7 to 18. We'll start off in the woods, we'll finish in the open, it'll be a great matchup. So filling out the New Jersey Goldfinch roster, we have myself, number eight, third year GM, trying to right the ship after a rough week one. Um, we got Sam Doyle, double zero, new acquisition via trade, um, a local favorite. And of course, uh, Stephen McGovern, number one, highlight reel, fan favorite from the uh, Wiffle Ball Stadium to this golf course. Great to hear from David Wang. Now let's hear from David Wang down at Greystone Woods. Um, really nothing. I tried to erase what happened last week uh, out of our minds. Um, come here fresh, new course. You know, our players know this course really well. So really trying to keep it simple, You know, play the game that we know uh, how to play. And I think we get W if we do that. The Goldfinches are a force in the woods. They made a championship run last year. I'm excited to see them try to do it again. On the other side of the tee, we got the Badlands Bandits coming back for redemption this week. They don't have their tier one Mike Scardino, but Willem Klein is here and he's ready to carve some lines in these woods. They got number 17, Tim Gaber, who's allegedly gonna be showing up a little bit later today. And Brian Roeder rounding out this two-man roster. Gonna be interesting to see what these Bandits get done. Now Willem Klein coming back after that rough match at Greystone. Willem, are you thinking about that at all today? Absolutely not. Just full reset. You know, I'm not going to think about that round. It was my first round on camera. Worst tournament round recorded on history. So I'm just here throwing good shots, throwing good putts. Going to bring my team to victory today. Love to see the confidence from Willem. They're going to need it today. But this format is a little bit different. Yeah, absolutely. We've got six teams in this league, four players on each team, and three teammates are going to play each week. Triple scramble here. So every player is going to throw from every lie. It's gonna be a fantastic day here at Greystone Woods. Game one coming up. Hole one, par three, 231 feet. Great starting hole, left to right shot. Super tricky green. Let's see if our players can stick this one here today. Both teams starting out with two man rosters. It's gonna be interesting to see how things go. Yeah, so we have a debut for uh, Sam Doyle. Uh, heard him in the commentator booth a couple times, but this is the first time seeing him throw some plastic and he goes the local route, but doesn't really get to the pin. Willem Klein stepping in here for the Bandits. Bandits play well in the woods. They're going to be looking to get an early start here. And Willem does just that. These first two holes are very scorable. Now that might put some pressure on these two teams where they might feel like they have to get the bird on these first two here. Yeah, it looked like David went for the layup there. Brian Roeder cashing in that nice birdie too. Again, Bandits without Mike Scardino. So it's just, it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, who kind of pushes the, the train forward for them here today. I think an early start's gonna be critical. Yeah, like Chris mentioned, since uh, we only got a two-man roster, we're gonna go doubles, you know, one guy goes easy, the other guy goes for it. Hole two, par three, 206, very attackable hole, right to left shot. A Little bit of water danger down there. Interesting scenario happening here. We've only got two players on each team. I hear rumors Tim Gaber is on his way. I hear rumors Steven McGovern might even show up. Two players for now, we'll see what happens. Yeah, the storyline of the day. Both GMs not currently fielding. Dave, talk a little bit about, you know, GM ship. You won GM of the year in 2020. What's, what's the strategy here when you only have two guys? Um, you know, I think uh, both Sam and I both played tons of doubles matches, and, you know, I think that's just how we're playing this, you know. Whoever's feeling good off the tee runs it, and then one guy, you know, lays up, and the other guy goes for it, putt. It looks like Sam Doyle was feeling very, very good, looking like a ballerina out there, taking a little bit off on his backhand. <laughs> Sam, we love to see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's an ace run right there to start out the day. Great shot. Looking to get that stroke back after hole one. Dave, talk about the standing so far. Rough start in week one, but you guys are looking good here in week two. Yeah, so we obviously Bandits and Goldfinch is in the last place here, trying to, you know, fight for position to get to the playoffs. Um, if you look at the records there, the first is the wins, the second is the loss, third is the t uh, ties, and the fourth number is actually the scoring differential, which does come into play when we have tiebreakers. Yeah, especially with this short season. We saw last year Tundra miss playoffs by one stroke after an ace from Scott. It's likely gonna be the same way this year. Bandits 
Struggling to work their way down the fairway. Yeah, tough to see. I'm taking, you know, three strokes just to get a look on such a pretty straightforward hole. Maybe some nerves, maybe, you know, missing that Tim Gaber magic. Yeah, rotor. But they do Destroy get the bogey, so thing. not too much damage. Big putt from Brian Roeder there. You got to limit the damage there on hole two here. Doyle looking to gain two strokes. Nice solo birdie. Love to see that. Again, Sam Doyle's debut. Love to see him uh, get started hot. Hole three, par three, 213 feet. Two options off the tee, left or right side. Both tunnel shots, both very tricky. One of these holes that just looks super straightforward, but kind of can get away from you, even in this triples or today doubles format. Yeah, and that water off the right is in play. That that nice gravel chip. patch will oh, cause some nice skips. Little chip, nice little chip. <sighs> Willem Klein stepping up. Goes for the straight gap with the forehand. Gets down there, but skips away a little bit. Long look for the Goldfinches here. Dave, so comfortable from the standstill from that distance, man. I'd love seeing you go from that far. Yeah, just pulled it a little right there. Oh. Will with an apparatus hit. Looks like he almost capitalizes as rotor taps it in. Yeah, this is this hole's not that punishing to miss. Like like we mentioned, it is it is a pretty tricky hole even in scramble format. <laughs> hole four, par three, 181. You can see how protected this green is here. The basket sits on a very elevated hill. David, stepping up to the tee. Looks like you're going backhand here, Dave. Yeah, I kind of go backhand or forehand here, depending on how I feel that day. And I guess uh, the wind was playing the backhand route. Just a little too high of challenging that ceiling and getting us, you know, 80 foot look. Yeah, you got to come right into the hill here on these uh, on these big elevation holes. Otherwise, you kind of fall downward. Always uh, seeing this hole play at 181 is always crazy to me because some days it feels way longer than that and some days it feels way shorter than that. And I think it's because the, the green is on such a big slope. Both teams getting into position. Oh, damn. Just, just low. Inches away from that two there. Let's see if uh, Willem could capitalize here. And he does. That's an excellent putt with a bunch of danger looming behind the basket. That's yeah, Willem critical. taking charge. Critical for the bandits to score there. Willem taking charge Sorry, here. <laughs> All right, so four holes in the books, tie game so far. Two strokes to go on both these last two holes. Dave, what are you thinking going into the last set? Uh, just, uh, you know, try to keep the composure going. We had a lot of lead changes after those first four holes, and uh, I think we're trying to finally get into a groove and uh, ready to get some birdies. Yeah, I know if I was the Bandits, I definitely want to, wouldn't want to be looking across the box to see Sam Doyle and David Wang here at Greystone. Yeah, good play from New Jersey so far, but Willem Klein taking charge when he needed to. Willem, how you feeling down there? Feeling great. You know, we had a little bit of a mishap on eight, but we got it right back on 10. Feels good. We got 10 now. Everything feels great. We got two holes left. Nothing but confidence. Absolutely love what we're seeing from Willem Klein so far here today. But the Goldfinch is staying in stride. Sam Doyle coming out. Dave Wang went for that trade for him. Sam, great play so far. What are you thinking going into the last two? Feels great. I'm feeling good right now. My shot's pretty clean. Uh, we're going up in my, you know, one of my favorite holds. I just wish I would have made that putt on 10 to keep it, to keep it at least a stroke. Whenever Sam Doyle's out on the course, it only seems right to get an interview with him. The man is a class act. It's also awesome to see fans out here as well, engaging with the players. Chris, you even got your girlfriend, Amanda, to come out to watch today. After forcing her to watch the videos at home, Amanda, how do you feel it is different uh, when you're actually there? Um, the difference is definitely more socialization. Uh, you got a lot of different friendships going on, meeting new people, you know, even if you're not playing like me, I'm still out here, I'm having a great time. So I'm great, to, I'm, ha I'm happy to be here. All right, hole five, par four, 432. One of the more fun tee shots here at Greystone Woods. It is a very narrow tunnel shot, but it does go a little downhill. You can see some players seriously attack this green here. We could see an eagle, we could see a bogey, lots of separation ahead. Yeah, I think uh, most players, especially in this triples-doubles format, is going to try to get an eagle look. Um, 
you know, get a nice drive down the fairway, only 150, 200 feet throwing. Speaking of triples, doubles, the Bandits have three. Tim Gerber is officially here, and he lays down the hammer on this windy tunnel shot. Although I miss having uh, Tim on the galaxy. Wow, look at that. He does look great in a Bandits uniform, especially when he's doing things like that fresh out of the car. Crouching Tiger Hayden Gerber. Did you see that finishing pose? <laughs> Going with my DD3 forehand, trying to flex it down the fairway and not really kick any trees. Yeah, great shot selection from, from a veteran of this course, Dave. Looked like you didn't quite get the turn you wanted there, but that still plays to a nice landing zone here. Yep, absolutely. Did Sam just kiss his disc? He might have. Is that something he does often? I don't know. We need to keep an eye on him today. <laughs> That's a great shot from Sam Doyle. Brian Roder for Eagle. Note a, a righty backhand there from Rotor. Yeah, he's got all types of stuff going on both sides, righty and lefty. Goldfinch is getting that birdie, and it looks like the Bandits are going to do the same necessary right now to be performing when you've got one, two holes left. Yep, scoring on this hole specifically is very, very important. Hole six, par three, 237 feet, uphill, straight shot, little bit of danger on either side of the fairway, but the players are gonna be attacking, looking for that easy tap-in birdie to close out this game. This hole has somewhat become iconic on this channel. I don't know, it wasn't really meant to be that way, I don't think, but uh, hole 12 is always huge. And number 12 showing up huge. I wouldn't call it parked, but they're in the circle on the dance floor, as Dustin Wolf would say. Yeah, Goldfinch needs, needs the match here. Uh, last hole of the round. Aww. Looks like I got that one turnover, or actually not turnover. <laughs> <laughs> actually not. <laughs> Dave's still trying to dial in that adjustment. Long putt for number eight. He's hit these many times. Can they find the tie? Just a little too high. Still possible if Willem misses this but he's in a great range here. What a great round from number 12 on the line. Yeah. He saw an opportunity to step up, Mike Scardino not being here in week two. Uh, Brian Roeder, obviously a great friend, but you know, he's a tier four. It's hard to lead the team as a tier four lefty. You know that, talk about that. Yeah, being able to rely on multiple players on your team, the Bandits have two really great players at the top of their roster, and they should have no problem competing. Yeah, that's an incredible performance from Willem there. And David, nice job. You mentioned it earlier. Every stroke counts here in this league. You're very familiar with that play. What do you think going into game two? It's a very similar layout. You guys only lost by a stroke. I mean, what do you say to your team here in this moment? Um, at this moment, I think uh, we got to, you know, not hold the punches anymore and attack, attack, attack. I think um, after last week and the first round of this week, we've been a little hesitant to be aggressive. And uh, I want to see us, you know, take stabs at the basket from 45, 60, from everywhere. I love that. You know, you mentioned early in the beginning, one guy running it, one guy going conservative. Now, Goldfinch's both going to attack. Hashtag tweet tweet, as Sam Doyle would say. <laughs> Let's head back over to Greystone, see how the players are feeling, and then we're gonna hop into game two. It feels great. Tim's uh, late arrival was more than welcome. He showed up, um, needed a hole or two to warm up, but after that, he drilled hole 11 with one of the better drives I've seen on the hole. And then Will cashed a clutch putt to give us the win, our first W of the season. Um, in general, just feeling great about my team. I wish Scardino was here, of course, but uh, yeah, just in general, really stoked on how the Bandits playing. Roeder's just so unselfish out there. Just like, not even going to talk about his shots. He just wishes the rest of his team was here to witness it. I love that energy. On the other side of the tee, New Jersey Goldfinches only lost by one. Let's see how they're feeling. Uh, game one, uh, tough loss. Uh, seems like that's all the Goldfinches have is tough losses, but you know, we're going to shake it off, go into this next six and uh, get a W. I love hearing from David twice. You know, on days when you're not in the booth, Dave, we should just film you twice on the course and then do a picture-in-picture -picture analysis of the game. I don't mind. Hole one, par three, 225, left to right shot. You got a gap right off the tee and a gap about halfway down the fairway and then some clutter on the left side. Sam opting for that turnover backhand. Yeah, that's nice. Super short. Gets down in the bowl. Long look. The Goldfinches haven't really had that knockout punch yet. 
I think that they're more of a, of a you know, win it by decision type team. <laughs> um, but they are great in these woods. I like that you're going to these wrestling terms. I know David's ah. big on big on UFC and all that. Yeah, I think uh, Lefty hit the nail on the head there. Um, but like I was saying earlier, I think it's time for the Goldfinch to get aggressive and, and deliver, you know, some type of finish. And here's their knockout puncher. Bang! Oh. Steven Let's go. McGovern showing up off of Goldfinch. the bench. <laughs> yeah, the highlight reel, man. He he just you know knows when to shine. <laughs> wow, he came out of nowhere. And literally flexes on everybody with a 44-footer. Hole one, getting some energy to the team. And it was his birthday yesterday. Shout out. Big shout out to Stephen McGovern. Wow. Emphatically making his appearance here at Greystone Woods today. If you've been watching from the Wiffle Ball days, you know how legendary this kid can be. Hole two, par four, 455. Right to left shot, low canopy, narrow hallway. A couple other obstacles at the green, but this is just your, your standard amazing woods golf here, guys. Yep, you're just trying to be clean. You don't, you know, you don't need that much distance. If you get too much distance, yes, you run into trouble with more woods. So staying clean, just an easy 250 uh, straight and maybe a slight finish to the left. Dave, did you see how far Adam Andrian got last week? I don't know if you witnessed yeah, that. I did. That was insane. Yeah, but I, you know, if you, if you push it too straight, you challenge that water. But yeah. But no, it's your, I'm not saying it's a recommended line. <laughs> Just wanted to know if you saw that. Yeah, that was a monster drive by Adam. Yeah, he was about 60, 70 from the basket. Rotor swinging it out a bit wide right. Oddly enough, that's probably one of those throws where it's the perfect distance. He'll still be looking down the tunnel on the next shot. Actually, I'm not really sure where he is here. Showcasing the lefty backhand now. Yeah, that's a great throw. I mean, Rotor deserves his due. Shot as I did on 11. Dude, that, you actually edit that like that that scene in it, for like one of your like if it's like a sick shot. He's ed edit, edit one of those. Holy shit! It's Jason Bourne. What is going on? <laughs> Steven wanting us to do some funky edits. Nice, dude. That was David with some. Holy shit! It's Jason Bourne <laughs> <laughs> with some well-deserved tree love. And the first Jason Bourne of the year. Yeah. Will it matches. That's how you take the pressure off the putt right there. Great approach from Willem Klein. And the shot. Goldfinch is getting the hot start that they need here, Dave. Yeah, that's you know that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm stoked that Steven's able to join us out here and uh, deliver some uh, heavy blows. Hole three, par three, 244 feet. A beautiful left to right shot here. I mean, so many different options on this hole. Sam just keeps licking and or kissing his discs. <laughs> and his chops <laughs> with the backhand turnover. Kisses the tree. Oh yeah, within 15. I said that there's a lot of different options off the tee. There's really not. There's di there's a lot of different ways you can finish into this green and be successful, but off the tee, it, it's just the same thing every time. Again, taking Willem's drive here. Simple oh forehand God, catches yeah. that last tree, but they still got to look in the circle. Amazing playing from Willem. David getting that straddle out to the side. The third birdie for the Goldfinches. The Bandits match on this one. Dave, where are you putting in the order for the Goldfinches? Um, funny you say that. Uh, the Goldfinches, we don't have a specific putting order. Um, I think we're constantly mixing it up, keeping the pressure off everyone. You know, we're always talking about who's feeling good, who's not. So, um, you know, I, I honestly didn't remember um, what putting order that we had, but I just know we're constantly mixing it up, so everyone's feeling good. I love it. This is a tricky hole here. Hole four, par three, 250. This is one you can get away with missing, but Doyle wants every bit of it. No way. That is an absolute bomb on this hole. Yeah, he hysered out a little bit into that, that thorn area over there. Another selection from Willem Klein for the Badlands Bandits. He's just really stepping up. Tim Gaber. Known for his uh, approach forehand game. Let's see if we can put it in here. Oh, oh, wow, very Paul Bolanich esque yeah. It's always going to be a fun ride when you've got Tim going a forehand approach. David Wang getting technical. That's a good out. 
Both teams gonna be tapping out the par three here. This is an okay hole to miss, but we got holes 17 and 18, Greystone Woods White. Some of the most beautiful finishing holes in Jersey. Lefty, how excited are you? Yeah, Chris, I'm super pumped to see how it finishes out. Love to see these two teams compete, and I think the Goldfinches will really put their stamp on this one. I love that. We're gonna try something new, head down to Greystone Woods and get a word from all the players. Let's check it out. All right, boys, really good game so far. Let's check in with Dave first on the end. Dave, tell us a little bit about your thought process. Two holes left, up by two. What are you kind of trying to do off the tee here? Uh, I just have to say, I'm glad you guys cleared up the technical <laughs> difficulties. I could get much better now. Um, but off the tee here, you know, I think we have two strokes to lead, and we're just going to try to play it safe, make them make a play. Uh, I think it's like the baseball motto that, you know, I think translates yes. well to disc golf. Love that, Dave. Good luck in the second half of this game. Second, third, last third, the third, third. We're going to do a little segment, favorite disc golfer going left to right. Rotor, let's start off with you. You Greg. don't watch the most disc golf, but you still know the guys. <laughs> yeah, he knows. Um, Greg Barsby. Greg Barsby, great pick. Willem? Personality-wise, Calvin Heimberg. Play-wise, Eagle McMahon. Wow, nice little Dan, double combo. Dan, can we get a quick look at Willem's bag over he's there on the right? Cool yeah, oh, he's oh. got the Eagle McMahon bag. It's true. Gorgeous. Willem was chance. prepared to answer that. <laughs> you can get all the way in there. Make sure they see that. And all the Willem's tags. <laughs> That's a decked out bag. All right, Sam Doyle. I'm going OG James Conrad. <laughs> wow. Big James Conrad guy. And it's signed. Love to see it. Dave, favorite disc golfer? Uh, the currently just switched after uh, this last tournament with the current champion of the Tallahassee Open, Albert Tam. Wow. Dave. Wow. Deep cut. Dave, Bazooka. Uh, who was Deep it? Who cut, was it before yeah. that? It was Eagle McMahon. Um, you know, I'm sure once the season starts playing, we get more footage of him throwing 700 foot, 800 foot rollers. Yeah. I think you just fired Willem up a bit. I think Willem's, <laughs> <laughs> I think Willem's ready to ace 17. Yeah, Eagle McMahon's no, are just front runners. It's a good pick, Albert Tam. Good front runners. You guys. We need more of that. Yeah, that framing was absolutely excellent. Yeah, great job, Dan Schiffrin. Uh, Lefty, I hear we have a surprise visitor for our next interview before we head into the bit of the last bit of this game here. Yeah, it is probably our number one New Jersey fan. Shout out Donna. Um, you know, he comes from Bloomfield. He is a huge fan of the channel, brand new disc golfer. David just thought he was a random guy, even though, David, little did you know, you are one of his favorite guys on the channel. Wow. We've got Tom of Bloomfield. Tom, you've been around since the Whippany Whistleball Ball League days. Couple things I want to hear from you. One, what does it feel like to be out here compared to seeing it on TV? And two, how excited are you to hopefully get involved in the league next year? You know, I gotta say, first thing, coming out here and watching them play, it's been a great two days so far, a great set of games. Way different, it really puts into perspective how hard it is for these guys to make some of these shots. Uh, you just don't get that on the camera. And for your second question, brother, you know, I'm real excited. I don't want to hype nothing up yet, but I'm out here every day grinding, practicing, you know, getting ready, so. You know, just look out, you know, they might call me Rookie of the Year one day, but we'll see about wow. that when it happens, you know. So. Love to hear that. <laughs> the confidence. The, the, the roar of approval from the crowd. Hole five, par three, 363. Dead straight shot. Kind of plays like an island because of the water on the left side and the rough on the right. Goldfinch is up by two. Bandits need to strike. Yeah, Sandoyle coming up to this uh, drive was saying it's just a simple oh, rock shot, and he shows us what a simple rock shot is. Emphatic. He Samuel loves those turnovers. Yeah, he, he loves those mid-range turnovers. Rock shot. I really think those interviews hyped up the crowd here going into these last couple. Crucial moment for yeah. BLB. Yeah. Brian Roeder swinging one out to the left. Good idea with that shot. Just needs a little bit more turn out of that disc. Bandit's in a rough position. They're not going to be able to find a stroke here. Great out by Rotor, though. Rotor navigating through those trees nicely. Goldfinch just can be confident here. They don't really need this stroke. Two going into the, the last hole is enough here. Oh, Unlucky wow. chain out. Just dribbles Dan, out. Dan Schiffer couldn't believe his eyes. I saw it. I know. <laughs> Brian Roeder tapping out the bar. Goldfinch was unable to capitalize, but, you know, we've been seeing some great fundamental play from them all day. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> David, you mentioned uh, finger flick baseball. I just love your traditional approach. Oh, yeah. 
make them make a play. Everyone make knows. them make a play. Or at least everyone who play finger for the like baseball. Everyone, knows. everyone who knows, <laughs> knows to make them make a play knows to make them make a play. A whole six par three, 380. Deceivingly difficult shot when you've been in the woods all day. Like I mentioned before, it's just going to be tough for the bandits to find two strokes as Stephen McGovern. Now, I know how good my brother is getting, but it is kind of shocking that they took his shot over the likes of veteran David Wang. I know that he loves this hole. And yeah. Sam Doyle, roller, grass is cut today. Surprised we didn't go with his shot. Yeah, I think... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a goal bench guy now. <laughs> I think Steve having such a nice shot may uh, let, uh, give myself and Sam the green light to go big, and I think we both just uh, pulled it a little bit. Happy to see Gaber on the tee here. And we don't, we, you know, Tim may have played well on a lot of these holes that we didn't see. Willem was just parking so many of the shots. So, you know, Tim, great start at the beginning of the round. Didn't see too much of him, but. Yeah, we've said it before. I mean, these some of the lower tier guys, you might not see them get their uh, celeb shot. Yeah, Matthew. yeah. Take my breath away, number 24. Oh, yes, my teammate! Get in the hole! <laughs> Oh. That was so close. <laughs> yeah. Matthew Coltrera, ladies and gentlemen. Thunder Bay Waves playing next week against the Milky Way Galaxy. We got Patrick Stewart. I just met him the other day. At this moment, I didn't know him at all. Now I do. Willem, trying to minimize the damage here. It's very dark out there right now. Yeah, it's, it's getting super tricky. David Wang. This is literally David Wang distance right here. Come on. Let's Make go. it count, kid. Oh, yeah, wow. for, for some reason, I just Hell love yeah. those 70 so, foot putts. I, I didn't even know that was going in, David. That's just literally you. And I'm going to use a phrase Lefty used earlier. If you watch this channel, you know. That's David Wang distance. And that slight downhill to it, too. Wrap it two, part two. Wrap it up. Ooh, we're taking here. Subscribe to the channel. The like the video. Drop a comment down below. What do you want more of? What do you want less of? <laughs> Tell Lefty how bad he did on catch. It's impossible. His camera's not good enough. It's not his fault. Okay? And strokes do matter, so nice shot, Dave. Good job, David. Good job, Goldfinches. You know, Lefty, I, I was frustrated by the first few holes. Of, of the catch, but I gotta, I gotta take back what I said. You did, I, I didn't really think about it too much coming down the stretch on the last few. You, you were doing well. Thank you, thank you. Sportsmanship, brotherhood. Thank you so much to the viewers. We know who you are. We have your IP address. We don't really know who you are. We're gonna track you down. But we appreciate you. We, we really do. We're gonna track you down. I mean, right with only three people. Look at this. People are just laying out discs. Uh, that looked like the start of some kind of putting game that was gonna happen in the pitch black. Uh, David, you took the deck, came out, you got the points back in game two, but you guys won separation there, plus two strokes of separation on the day after that three stroke win. That's gotta feel really, really good. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like I was saying, you know, it was tough first week and tough uh, first match of the second week, but I'm glad we finally got a win and hopefully carry some momentum into the next week. And the Bandits, I mean, th th this just shows how competitive this league is. I, I, you know, they probably left the day feeling pretty good, but now sitting in last place, I mean, Lefty, we're only two weeks into the, the season here. Is, is, it, is it cause for concern in the Badlands? What do you think? I mean, we all saw how good a uh, player like Michael Scardino can do. He carried them from circle to all day, and no one's out of this race. Yeah, I think that's a good point. You know, Willem and, and Scardino together is going to be a serious force. Up next, we've got my team, the Thunder Bay Waves, facing off against the Milky Way Galaxy. Yeah, you saw Matt Colchera on the tee. They tried to scare us a little bit with Matt's big distance, but we're not too scared of him or Chris's throw-ins. We're looking to make it competitive here uh, to work our way to first place where we belong. But you guys will be seeing fresh VFDGL content every week for the next 13 weeks. Get ready for that. Yeah, we have an episode coming out every Wednesday for the next 13 Wednesdays. Lock it in. Subscribe to the channel. We, we act like the people who watch till the very end aren't already subscribed. <laughs> You're supposed to say that in the beginning of the video. Different uh, approach here. Yes, different approach. Dave, Retention. speaking of different approaches, let's take a different approach to life and uh, hear sure. from you about um, 
something. No, that's a cut. <laughs> and it's a cut. <laughs> Almost had it.